Oh, the old fresh crack. You know, we, we could emulate that sound, and I could just use it as a soundboard, but where's the fun in that? Nobody wants to do that. So, so Some people might think that's what we do. Every single yeah, time. Yeah, these are real cracks. Nope, see? That just happened. That is a fresh... <laughs> well, it's been out of the fridge a little while. Probably not quite as frosty as it was 10 minutes ago. I've been waiting for us to start this segment so I could... Yeah, we got off on a tangent talking about meatloaf and all that good fun stuff. Oh, meat. Not mm. quite as cold of a beer as it was a minute ago for you. But you'll muscle through it. And in, in the name of meat, it was worth it. Yeah. I'm it glowing is, like the metal on the edge of a knife. It is mid-season <laughs> meatloaf. How could it not be any... I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> this is true. I just can't wait for the next break. What's gonna, what are we going to play? Nobody know. knows. Who know. knows? I don't even know. Two out of three ain't bad. Yeah. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. Paradise by the Dashboard Light. Mm. I would do anything for love. Mm. We might save those for the Patreon show. Mm. Who knows? Speaking of the Patreon show, yeah, we're about to get into a question that was asked, uh, basically asking about Rashad Penny, and and there was a trade that was on the table for for one of our patrons. He wanted to know what we thought about him, and we basically got like in an argument amongst ourselves about whether we should text this guy back on on the Patreon community page, or should we like start a Google Hangouts and chit chat it through? Should we wait and talk about it on the free show? Should we talk about it on the Patreon show, the after show? I don't know. There's just so many ways that we can answer a patron's question that we can't even figure out the best way to get it. We're just trying to figure that out for your pleasure. Yeah, well, it, it spawned this discussion of, of what to kind of do with Rashad Penny right now and our feelings about him. Um, so I think we'll start off with uh, we'll, we'll go with, with Jay Wayne's side of this argument. So basically what, me the what, what the Patreon member was asking was if he can get a mid-round... Uh, pick for Rashad Penny right now uh, would you go ahead and take that which is probably about what you paid for him so just yeah I mean some people might have got a little wild and crazy and had him at the one two one sure three maybe, and maybe if he was uh, maybe if it was earlier in the season you yep. maybe you got excited and, and you drafted him a little high so maybe you could be taking a loss on this or maybe it was at the end of the season and the preseason when he was banged up and there was reports of him gaining some weight and dropped down to, you know, seven, right. eight, nine, ten range. He sure. Gained 18 pounds. No way. That was all muscle. He he Penny went one, two, one, three, not two, because in the early drafts, guys wasn't hurt yet. Penny went one, three in a draft and in a FFPC draft with Casey and I. And then by the time the late rookie drafts came around in preseason, I got him at one ten. Right. In a league. And Royce so, Freeman was kind of jumping right, up Royce in that. Right. Royce Freeman. Yeah. Penny, everything Penny was area. going wild and crazy. And and Sony Michelle was already banged up with a knee injury. Things were going wild and crazy. Set the stage. Our boy Chris hits us up on Patreon. He said, "Give it a little context." He's like, "I'm two and five, Jay Wayne." Uh, you know, I'm not necessarily throwing it in on the season, but I'm two and five. Things aren't looking great. I got the offer for a mid first round pick on the table. Should I take it? A ten man league, just for context. Mm. And and, and the, he has a nice stable of running backs already. Oh, a solid roster. Chris Browning's team is crushing right yeah, now. Yeah, got got a good stable of backs. But at two and five, that's how fantasy football works. Right. Happens sometimes. I would take the trade. I would move Penny right now for basically what I had to pay for him. I uh I'm but I'm like the least biggest penny lover on the show. I'm I like him the least. Well, I, I don't feel I it down on my plums. I wouldn't say anybody this isn't a a wasn't a big uh huge penny loving show. We, I had him no. ranked as this as the 6th RB right out of out of this class, which is is not some people had him higher like you were saying he was going 1-3 on, on in some circles. So, I don't not not that any of us really loved him. I, I, I liked him just fine. We all had our questions. We had well, he we went have 20, right. It we had twenty scream. minutes of talking about Penny and why we were had our reservations about him, but we still liked the size and the frame and and what he had done. And you can't you can't be too upset about the production and all that other things. But we had some reservations. Jay Wayne being the most reserved, Big Co being moderately indifferent, and I was not. I didn't love him, and I didn't necessarily hate him. Well, so. some people liked him. Some limited people loved him, and then the Seahawks took him in the first round, right? Right. And then he screamed up the oh, peep, see, see, oh, you know. And then so the people that liked him were all over him, and then some people that didn't even have any idea who he was was like, okay, I'm taking him right behind guys because the Seattle Seahawks took him in the first round, first back off the board after after Barkley. So so why why uh, the uh, well. How much time you got, buddy? <laughs> I got it. I got the rest of an hour. Right, right. So, 
you put on the show sheet last week because we were we fill up a show sheet full of things to potentially talk about and we never get to them all. Um, Imagine that. But Penny was on here, so I I, I was looking into it. Uh, and and Seahawks were on a buy, so it was a good week to skip him anyway. Um, True. And you ask, you know, he you basically said that he deserves more run, and there's no reason that a team that's running the ball like the Hawks are running it shouldn't give this guy more chances, mm-hmm. right? And you know, I, I've actually been fairly impressed with some of the runs that he's put down on tape this year. There you go. There has been times when he looks like the big. So strong. you're saying there's a chance. It looks like there's times when he's the big, strong, fast guy that they drafted him to to be. Uh, but then you also see the mistakes. And I, I think that's the thing here is I, I don't think the Seahawks fully trust this guy yet, which, you know, it's young in his career. I get it. Um, but he's had some fumbling issues. Sure, he broke his hand, but you can't fumble. Uh, fumble's a fumble. He's muffed He's muffed some kicks. He's returned kicks that he shouldn't have of return, he should have just yeah. downed him in the end zone. He's not doing that though. It's every week. Uh-huh. This guy is a liability for this team at times. That's why he didn't play a single snap versus the Rams. They didn't let him return a single kick, it's, and they didn't give him a single touch. It's maybe the reason that he didn't play versus the Rams. I like your okay. theory though, but dude. I'm not. I upset like your about theory. It. When so a then, game, a, divi- a, a hard fought division rival game, slugfest. You can't even, make a mistake and beat the Rams. High scoring affair. And you're in no, the game. Yep. No. No. No need. But it's not like he's been getting a crazy amount of run, and then you're in this high tension situation, and then you're like, "Whoa, bro, we can't play you." Right. But I, mean, I still but like. I like of, the theory. It's I'm kind of what sure. he's laying here. down. Uh, and then, and then the next game, they give him. You know, they're blowing out the team, and they finally give him some run. And and then you see another like just where it made me shake my head, and it proves to now, me the game, that he's not out of shape. The They're, next game is that after the Rams, the in, right. in London against the before the bye in London against the Raiders, they're crushing him. He comes in, plays in the fourth right, quarter in okay. the second half. Okay. He had a nice uh, twenty yard screen pass, I think, early in the second quarter, mm-hmm. and then didn't get another touch until that game was pretty much already out of hand. Right. And then at the very end of the game, and this proved, I, I think I just said it, mis- I misspoke just a second ago, but to me, he's not even in shape. So we heard the news. We already mentioned about how he gained 18 pounds, right? Not all muscle, no way he could have gained 18 pounds of muscle. So you hate seeing that. I hate, you know, that's just screams Eddie Lacy to me, a dude gaining a ton of weight, right? Sure. Um, and so at the end of that game, they give him the ball a couple times, and he actually he gets the first down that basically ices the game. And he's his head's not in the game. He doesn't realize now that they can just take a couple knees. He gets up after carrying it, and he's like motioning for them to sub him out because he's tired. Mm-hmm. And they're like, "No, nah, man, one, just stay." Number one, you don't in. know if he's tired. He could have. He could have. <laughs> <laughs> no, because he could have easily had something that ailed him a little bit, and he was like, "Wobo, <laughs> hang on, hey, let me, let me, maybe br- bring somebody maybe, in here. Yeah. Maybe, maybe my, maybe a brace wasn't right, or a piece of equipment. <laughs> like you don't know no, that he well, was tired. Maybe, but then they were like, "No, you're staying in because of the clock, and the game's over." And he was like, "Oh," and he kind of like says, "Oh," and smiles and like shakes his head, and then he takes the knee, like stands yeah. there and takes the knee. That's so, but his head's not in the game. He's calling because he's tired. He fumbles. They don't trust him. I never like this cat. If I could move I him for a first bias. round pick, I don't. I don't. I don't like this part of the argument. Confirmation bias. You never liked him. You're going to hang on to right. everything. Right. Right. But and, and but what has he done this year besides have a bust off a couple decent runs where he looks good? But he also looks like he's shot in the neck with a dart at sometimes. He just sure. goes down super easy, which is what we saw in college sometimes. Well, while he I'm can't still gain th- the trust of this team, like why should I? While I'm still hold thinking on. about it, the Eddie Lacy reference. He. The weight gain does not make you feel great, and that was really bad. Obviously, he's it's coming back off. He's coming from a it's point. He's coming from a point that Lacey never was, as far as like long speed. You know, so I mean, it's not like he what Lacey hey, weight gain is weight Eddie Lacey was a bruiser through and through. Never was fast. Nobody called Eddie Lacey. Maybe fast. his wife was pregnant and he didn't want her to feel bad about eating. You know, we've I just, just with, wanted to throw it. You know, we've seen this before. Don't get me wrong. I was just <laughs> as worried and not excited about Rashad Penny's weight. I didn't want to draft him at 110 either at that right. point in the season. You know, where right. we were in the week three of the preseason. But you wish our you had, late rookie draft. I wish I'd have had Calvin a, Ridley, huh? A couple picks up. But you hate wide receivers well i mean yeah i don't, I don't right? actually to be fair i'm not sure if calvin ridley was available yeah, he was yeah i, I, he was, I think was. i think the only i think it was dj moore was the only wide receiver off the board it was uh well okay. it was eight, eight running backs and what wide receiver 
Yeah, that's nine. So maybe there was. I think another... Calvin Ridley might have been off the board. I'm not 100 percent sure, but whatever. Well, I mean, yeah. let's be honest here. I, yeah, I know what. You, yeah, I, I know what Jay Wayne's I, driving. No at. chance. I was taking Calvin right. Ridley at that point. Obviously, now right. that I've seen some things, I, I could I could manage that. But look at all. I mean, just we'll get into the conversation Actually, here I think in it a was second. Christian Kirk. A bunch of other. Uh, no, Christian Kirk went at 112. Okay, well then because um, I was Ridley. trying to trade into that. I was trying to make a trade. Neither here nor there. Right. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, the biggest thing for me is I have seen those plays where Rashad Penny gets lateral agility out the wazoo in the hole or j- jumps around the side. There was a there was a couple plays where he he shows why they wanted him. I don't know if he's ever showed why he was a first round draft pick ahead of some of the other cats. No, I haven't seen that. But I've seen not defending the ability. pick of the Seahawks and where they took him. No, I don't like. I've I don't seen, didn't like that at all. I've seen ability out of a big man. Like he's big and he can move, and I've seen him move. Sure, he has done some things that you don't want a rookie running back to do. And you know we've there's there's ups and downs through all running backs. Some running backs are named Carry On Johnson and they can't make a mistake. And some running backs are Ronald Jones and they're just now getting some carries. You never you know it's all right. over the board, especially with this rookie class. But I, my answer to this guy was again being in the same situation I had drafted him myself. I told him I'd have no problem moving Penny for the mid first with all the value he's lost and Chris Carson being a real thing like Casey said he would be last year. I said go for it if you're not married to him. Would it, you know, you got a late rookie draft, and I took him. I told him about my rookie so you, draft. I pulled it up. You took him at one eight. You had one eight, which was the last running back was on the board. One eight. Yep. And then yeah. okay, that makes and sense. And then DJ Moore goes at one nine, and Calvin Ridley goes at one ten. That makes and sense. You had Cortland at one eleven. Oh, I thought it was one ten myself. And uh, I did too, but it was one eight. It was the last running back. There were seven running backs straight, and then you took the last one that you could get. And I know you didn't want to make that pick. I know you wanted to trade it. No, I, right? yeah, I was trying to trade. I was right. trying my best to right. trade. Yeah. So now if you could go get that same That's exactly value what, yeah. after the shitty start this cat's yeah. had to his career, I'd absolutely Yeah, well, do thanks it. for looking that up. I thought it was 110, but I basically said I took it. I told him I, that I took him at 110. It was 18. Yeah, his last running back on the board. Um, you know, worst case scenario in a 10-team league, this dude's in a 10-team league. You're getting, your, you're getting 110. Worst case scenario, obviously he said it's a mid-pick. So, and then he said, I said, assuming you have your first round pick, now you'd have two first round picks and you can package that up to do pretty much anything you want to do for the most part. And, you know, so that, that was where I was at on it. The, you know, Penny lost a ton of value and coming from way up high when the Seattle, Seattle Seahawks took him early, the whole weight gain fiasco dry, and, and another thing too, weight like gain you, gate, we'll call that. Weight, we don't, no, nobody actually knows. Nobody that knows what happens. The weight gain the gate, weight gate, it may or may weight, not have weight happened. Weight gate may have may not have happened, but it was a real thing for fantasy value. And he looks sluggish. Like you said, <laughs> it took a blowout of the Raiders in London for him to get the second half. Yeah, he made a play in the second quarter, but for the most part, that was second half blowout action for his stats. Mm-hmm. And Chris Carson is a real thing. And I mean, I, you know, Mike Davis, he's a Gamecock. He's my boy. He's not somebody that's going to hold you back if you are a first round talent and you're supposed to be on the field. You know, he's taken back seats before he shows up and, you know, he takes a back seat. He's a good, good running back, but he's not like that. Hey, I'm a pro's pro and you can't pass me on a depth chart kind of guy. Mm-hmm. And so I just like the Seattle Seahawks have obviously Casey broke down the moves they made, the coaching changes, the defensive, the tight ends that they drafted, and the the, dra- the drafting and the free agent tight ends that they brought in. So they're finally and, getting them like, back this week. They, they had this plan in mind. Yeah, Casey broke it down for With you the in the preseason. The coordinator, the ch- offensive line changes, Which some the people hate tight end changes. Yeah, if you don't like it, that's fine. They hung with the Rams and they almost won. Cur- um, uh, the quarterback Russell Wilson has the least amount of t- attempts per game in the league right now. And they, that's what they're doing, and they're 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 winning slash almost beat the Rams. They had a slow start, is, you know, but they've looked better. They, recently. They're coming on strong, and Defense this is their is philosophy. Sure. And this is you know, so I'm not I'm not hating on the on, you can't hate on the Seahawks for what they're doing if it's improving. When it's and, not and working, and better. when it's not working, and they're running the ball, and everyone's like Brian Schottenheimer's the worst. I don't know why we brought him in here. He's terrible. But when it's working, and you're running the ball a shit ton, and you're playing some good defense, and then Russell Wilson can ad lib some, and now he's starting to get parts and pieces back. It's it's not as terrible as exactly. as he wants, but when you're losing, you like to point fingers and every, say every Schottenheimer's time. the worst. I don't know why we hired this every guy. Time. Which is it's fair. It's a different NFL, and you want to see this high flying act. But right. a win's a win, and exactly. if you can get wins so, doing what they were doing, and and which is part of the reason that ha- kept helped me keep Penny uh, elevated in liking him some because I wasn't necessarily in love with the prospect, and I didn't like where they took him at all. Nope, I thought it was stupid. 
Um, not that I'm against taking running backs in the first round, but I just didn't like I had other running backs slotted ahead of him. And I just like I'm most not, people. Did. I'm not sure why you took him. And the, right. but like you said, when people were very validated, when sure. he did get taken in that for at the end of the first round over some of these other backs. But to, to the to with the Schottenheimer and the and the offensive line, maybe not quite being as bad as people thought it was going to be and, and some bigger sets and sticking with the run game helped me stick with uh, my my like for Rashad Penny. Which you never loved him to begin right. with, but that was you know he was. But it helped me from being like I'm fading him for over some of these receivers in a rookie draft. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because I liked the situation that he was rolling into, even though I didn't agree with what oh, they did. Oh, we loved the situation. We were in love with the situation. We thought the Chris Carson talk was just some craziness. How did all the Chris? You know the the coach had the the Russell Wilson Matt Flynn thing. Was it Matt Flynn from the? Yeah, from, yeah. So that whole thing happened. You know they paid Flynn a lot of money. Russell Wilson's only a third round draft pick. He gets in, beats him out in camp. He's a starter. So that it had happened before, but you get the first round draft pick and nobody thought Chris Carson would get the nod. Right. And obviously maybe if Penny doesn't break his finger or whatever. And Penny was, if Penny, Penny doesn't was get hurt his run in, if, the, maybe, in the preseason. Maybe if he doesn't get hurt and put on and, some and weight. In the, in maybe weight and, gate. Yeah. Maybe weight gate never happens and Penny and course Chris Carson isn't getting the love that he's getting. The but, weight was before he broke his hand before the preseason. So ooh, you can't blame the Jay the, Wayne ain't gonna miss a shot. I, I'm not sure it was. Actually, I don't think it was either. I think at all. It, I think that it, all kind of came out after he was <laughs> on the back end of that. Thing. Jay Wayne grimaces and goes to his computer but, to search up. for Anyhow, some dates. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the other approach on this and say that while I do agree a hundred percent that, excuse me, two first rounders are fun and you can do some things with packages. Right. That when you have the two first rounders, that there there are certainly things that you can do, and he, this guy has Chris Thompson on his team and I said you know yeah it'd be nice you could take these two first and maybe a Chris Thompson and go get something that's maybe a sure thing and he already did that just to so y'all boys know everybody that's listening right now this Patreon thing we got going on it actually is popping off and our community page is popping off and he everybody's coming in with their trade talk and it's incredible and he's already traded Casey said trade Chris Thompson he's already packaged up we'll talk about that deal later but just wanted to throw it out there yeah. so but I've I've I had two first round picks in this same league that we're talking about where you had to draft for Shad Penny and yep. I was I was trying to deal two first round picks for a better player and I was trying to add Devontae Adams in a first to to a player and trying to get one of these upper echelon running backs and nobody will come off of them so you know it's nice in theory to have them um, yeah. and you know maybe you got to go in there and be a little bit more bullish and overpay for one of these. Uh, big time running backs, which I wasn't necessarily willing to do. Me and you had doubled up on uh, two first rounders and Christian McCaffrey to get Zeke, and you know it hasn't panned out like we exactly thought it would necessarily this year. But it's been fine. Sure. Like, and I would do it again. I would do it again. Um, as crazy as it sounds, obviously there was a couple weeks there where Christian McCaffrey was everybody's favorite running back right. on the face of the earth, but he got thirty rushing yards last week in and, a victory. You know, we'll talk and about the Amari Zeke Cooper got shut thing. out too. Right. Zeke, Zeke got shut out too. But last it, week we'll talk about the Amari yeah. Cooper and the impact of of the Cowboys and and Zeke and all that moving forward. You're missing uh, Kyle Frederick um, and. Love. Prince Frederick. Travis Frederick. Travis Frederick. <laughs> Travis Frederick is the center. And uh, some some parts and pieces on that offense and you know on receiver. Anyway. <laughs> Martin. But Zach Martin. Yeah. As far as the penny trade goes, like I'm just gonna disagree with like, yes, I, I do agree with the two firsts, like I was saying, and, and you can get something good, but it doesn't always work that way. Like you can't always just turn those two firsts into something awesome that's safe. And sometimes you get you, you kind of get stuck in the position. Depends how bad you want to do it and how bad you want to move on from these picks. But I'm not going to just sell the two picks for something that I'm not 100 percent sold on. Um, so I, I wasn't able to get a really a deal done with anything that I thought was worth those two first round picks in a class that I had done a lot of work in and I thought was pretty good. So I'll just make my picks. I don't know what this class is going to be. Just looking at inside, looking out, the running backs don't look as good. Oh, it's all about the 2020 class. And the receivers look good. So I don't know what's really going to happen. I don't know if this is the best draft class. I haven't really gotten into that. Anyway, like I just, I see this as somewhat of a lateral move. Like I don't want to really necessarily trade my one, if it's a, it's a 10 man league, if I'm getting one, six or seven or eight for, is that, that's my mid. I don't know what my mid is going to be. And I'm not right. really sure how you know what your mid's going to be at this point. Sure. But, 
I'm just not ready to just move on from from Rashad Penny. They got a lot of draft capital invested in him. And while that's not everything, like I do view Chris Carson as a good player, but nothing great that isn't replaceable. Certainly Mike Davis is replaceable, replaceable. in my opinion. Uh, this is the same team that's keeping pro, a healthy Procise off the field, which I think is a mistake for them. Like if, if Procise is healthy, I think that he, he could be a good player. Um but that's neither here nor there. I love Procise, and I can't believe he's not on the field right not now. Not going to get started on Procise. I think he was, but he did end up getting hurt. Anyway, um, of course he did. I just think that you know you see what Carryon Johnson's doing right now. He is getting held back a little bit by coaching staff and whatever decisions they're making. Like Legarrette Blunt's still getting he, twelve carries a game or splitting reps with him. Like there shouldn't be any reason for that. There's no reason that Legarrette Blunt should be in impeding on what. No. Carry on Johnson's doing right now. It's Absolutely clear that not. carry on Johnson is the better player in this offense. Not even close. You're not getting as good a look at Rashad Penny or nearly any look at Rashad Penny and what no he looks. can do, which I don't understand that factor of things. Maybe it is the Seahawks. It is Pete Carroll. And they he does do Alex Collins. They did cut. They make some questionable decisions. I'm not. Maybe this is a ego thing. Maybe, you know, I don't know what happened. I don't know if maybe they're not Chris Carson is or uh, Rashad Penny isn't taking things as serious as they want or the the injury happened and now maybe they maybe he fumbled once or twice and muffed a kick or whatever and they don't trust him that much maybe all that's in play I don't know why they're not giving maybe him. the coach didn't want that player and they drafted him high and he's like I'm gonna hold him back on purpose uh, any of those are possible I don't know why but all I know is is that if he could get on the field and get something like the 12 carries a game and show something if anything like he's going to be worth more than that one six or one seven or one eight or one nine or whatever you're trading him for rapidly like in within three games of him showing any sort of life I think he's going to be like you carry on Johnson you couldn't get you get those two ones and Chris Thompson somebody might not accept that trade for carry on Johnson at this moment like carry on Johnson you got to pry carry on Johnson away from somebody like nobody's giving you Sony Michelle maybe now that he's got an ankle maybe right, you could get right. him from somebody nobody's giving you Nick Chubb right now like yeah you don't come at me with your two ones right to carry you can't, on because you, you ain't getting him you can't get them off people's team and we haven't even seen what Rashad Penny can do this is dynasty I'm I'm willing to play the wait and see like he's a rookie like maybe he made a couple mistakes maybe he's making some mistakes in practice he's got to sort those things out I just I'm just not willing to sell I get it. what's basically in my opinion a lateral move with the exception of now you got two first round picks so when you add those together it's not a lateral move but I just we see how hard it is to get running backs in general like in every yeah. league I'm in nobody is trading you a running back if I need a receiver I can go find a receiver a decent receiver I could I could get almost any receiver off just about anybody's team f for not a crazy price tag right now. Yeah. Right. But I can't do anything yeah. to pry a running back from anybody. If you're talking about Matt Breida, he's the best running back that anybody's ever seen. Well, I think he's going to be really good and I need that. Or right. uh, you're talking about Isaiah Crowell. Like, I can't sell him right now because I don't know what my running backs are doing. Or, exactly. You know, he nobody's trying 200. to give up a running back. And obviously, right now, this guy's losing, but he has a good stable of backs. So I'm just not sure why you want to go ahead and sell that player off when you have a decent stable and you can afford to wait for Rashad Penny and we just we, you haven't even seen and like Jay Wayne said there has been a handful of plays where I saw him out there and it was like he did look quick he did look elusive he looks like a big guy who sometimes is hard to bring down sometimes he goes down a little too easy that was one of the bigger knocks we had on him didn't like the contact behind the line of scrimmage and how well I haven't seen him really the bust in in breaking the tackles really but I've seen him burst through a hole that was right. open and hit it hard which and is I, what he did in college I think he's got decent hands and then just to that's to, the to then, to then go back to all this like i just think chris, i don't like i like chris carson i was you're the first chris carson i was uh, yeah, you were first on him i like everything i saw from him and i like the way he plays the game but he's not an unreplaceable talent it's not like oh there's no way we could take chris carson off the field he right just does, but it's really hard for them to do so though because he does all the little things well he can catch he can pass protect and I'm, then he's I'm gonna not, get three I'm yards in the dust. i'm just arguing with like the eliteness of a player right. and yeah. saying that he's it. replaceable especially with a guy you have a lot of draft capital invested in you haven't seen a whole lot but i mean mike davis why is and mike davis has been fine on the field but like you got to get penny out on the field just to see what you got especially on a team who's running it like they were running it and as you guys like to point out and every you know, injuries happen yeah exactly. chris carson could get hurt next week mike davis could get hurt next week both of them could get hurt next week they're getting a ton of carries apiece and this is a offense that's predicated off the run they want to run the ball that's clear so at some point if he could just get in there and get 12 carries a game 10 carries a game and show you that there's some life there i just think that this value goes through the roof and and all of a sudden next year you're trading two first round picks and chris thompson to get 
Rashad Penny back on your team. Like I, I agree. And let me, my final point there is is I completely agree with what you're talking about. This is exactly what our model is built off of. My model, at least, for rookie drafts is take the running backs because it happens quicker. Obviously, Calvin Ridley blew up a couple times, and he's fun, and his his value's there. And Cortland Sutton looks like a stud. But you know, just take your first rookie r- first rookie wide receiver in most drafts was DJ Moore. And he's in a situation where there's targets going all over the field, except for basically him. And it's not and that he looks bad with the ball. No, the not at all. It looks good. He's, he's been you know, blowing it too. He his, just they but, haven't been benching him because of it. But the Sony Michelles and the, and not that he was going ahead of these guys, but the, you know, the, and, he, but he was he was going ahead he of was. all the Carry On Johnson. And, 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 and anybody all, that didn't listen to us was taking him and, over Carry On Johnson. But in all the hype leading up, like Penny was hot, and nobody had Penny over Carry On. At least a lot of people didn't have Penny over Carry On Johnson. Some people had. You uh, mean they didn't have Carry On over? They didn't Penny. have Carry. Right. Carry on yeah. over Penny. They didn't have Chubb. A lot of people were downgrading Chubb. They didn't oh, like sure. all, all of a sudden Chubb wasn't any good. And Penny was ahead of him. And some people didn't like Sony Michelle. And, and Ch- Penny was one, two for a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. Well, obviously, after Geis went down, Penny was one, two for a lot of people. But what I, I, the whole rookie running back escalation of value first year is what I love in my rookie 100%. running backs part. Now, the How other side, they can yeah, ascend to, to start exactly. ability. But as a Rashad Penny owner, the other side of that is is oh and and a Ronald Jones older in another league is like holy cow how quickly the mighty can fall though you sure. know and I get it I guess he didn't fall too far because he's still getting offered a first for him you yeah. know so I get that's what I'm, I but the first that round pick you get offered if you've had Rashad Penny and like you said you got other running backs so you got Rashad Penny Chris gets this offer in his inbox and he's like well. I got other running backs, and I've dealt with this emotional roller coaster that is Rashad Penny ownership. And now I get a first round pick. That first round pick, the only thing it cannot do is lose sure. value. You know, so that now it's not going to double in value like Rashad Penny could. But that first round pick ain't going. It can't get hurt. It can't blow an ACL. It can't go go out for on IR for the rest of the season. And all it really does is increase in value. The more we get to know about these people coming out of college, and then this time next year or this in four, six months, that actually gets a little more valuable. Mm-hmm. Now. If Rashad Penny gets run down the stretch, he's probably more valuable than that. But there's a guarantee in that first round pick, so I can, that's why guarantee. I said I think it's higher probability that Penny gets some run down the stretch here, and maybe he does or doesn't light it up. But I just don't see I don't see his value falling too too much. Even if he doesn't get any run, it's well he didn't get any run yet. So yeah, I think I get, the value yeah. kind of stays where it is at least for another season. Yeah, uh, but and, you're, and an you're, you've seen a bl- you've seen a couple of weeks window there where my man was fat and out of shape and can't get anywhere near the field and you've just there's that just that blackness there where you're like oh my sure. god I'm a Rashad Penny owner. I spent a first round pick on him and now he's barely worth anything. I don't even know. I was getting trade offers for that pick. I should have made a pick. You know who I, I should have, I could have, I would have, but now I got Penny and he ain't worth nothing. But then he is it, still worth something. Though. I know because he gets on the field and he has a couple plays. I don't even and know so if now it's you're that, getting first if it's round that pick. to much of like, not going to say the casual dynasty fan, but not like the crazy dynasty fan who's trying to watch every game and watch every, like I think some people just are still, Hey, you got, he's a first round draft pick and they, they got Chris Carter. And, and he just, put up 2,000 yards. Right. And, he's, yeah. and he just hasn't been on the field. So I just don't think there's... And everybody a, on Twitter loves him. I don't think there's a huge value drop coming even if he doesn't play that much through through the offseason. And, and we'll see what happens. Um, I, you know, I just... There I, is a... He's still a young rookie running back with first round draft pick. There is a floor to his value as long as he don't get hurt. It, you know, at least for a full another season. I get you. I get that. It's just that first round pick, you can do things. I, you know, I, so I didn't mind the trade. I don't... I don't I'm not condoning the trade. I just, I, but I can see, I can see the. That means you're not approving. Yeah, I, but I can see the value in having two first round picks. I just say that they're. This could quickly turn into Rashad Penny being worth two first round picks plus very quickly because there is just like we just talked about with all of this how high, high how highly he was ranked yeah. and how much love was for him there's there's a built-in fan factor there yeah. people who are waiting for him to do anything to say i told you so look at how good rashad penny is just like we've talked about like Lockett on this show multiple Tyler times Lockett, with, yeah it doesn't now he's starting to ascend again people are back on the train and how good he is because oh, there was told you. there was a ton of hype for this guy there's a ton of hype for penny and i i just i think the stock can can kind of hang on. So I think I'm more in the I'm trying to buy Penny in this situation now in a league where I'm. Are you giving up a mid first next year for I, Penny? In in certain situ- situations, I will. In the whoa in, whoa 
whoa, whoa. In the league that where we're all three in it and it's like a home league and we the, the one we do the mock it up, fuck it up, like I am hurting for running backs right now. I had all two years ago I had seven running backs. This week I had to start Kyle Ustrek. <laughs> like <laughs> Kyle, uh, Carlos got traded Thursday and yeah. <laughs> I was up a creek. I couldn't yeah. get anybody and nobody would even deal me anybody. Like I can't even get anybody to give me some dude who might get me six points. I mean, I did they're, tell they're you. hanging on. You did. I said, send me a second round pick and you can have. What's I couldn't, his, what's I couldn't name? give you a second round pick for Peyton Barber. Peyton Barber. Barber that was it. Not, not for a potential. Maybe I just I was in a pickle. I needed a one week <laughs> starter here and I could figure it out in the coming weeks. I told you Carlos I'd give you a fourth give back. Ah, whatever. I can't do that. <laughs> but in that in that situation, like no, I, I'm 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 you started. Kyle. I'm right in the middle of the pack right now. Still, I have a good team in my opinion. You have a chance to go to playoffs. I could get in the playoffs, and if I could get some running back points, I could easily make a run. And I have so, Rashad Penny, and I and we were actually we were arguing about the same thing. Yeah. You were like, well, I'd give a first for him, and I was like, send it over. Uh, but I can't right now because my first right. I gotta. I'm trying to see what I can get for my first for a startable player right now because now i help. need it you need now help. if i didn't and if i was in the situation like this guy i would be going the opposite direction i got a stable of backs how about i try to add one more whose value could easily increase or uh, it could go down every every sure it could but i don't like i said i don't i think you got at least another year window before it there's does. a floor to it there's not it, it can't go but it's, it can't uh, go again away. which is why we do a lot of stuff on patreon and we talk about the things what we do is because it's all situational of you know it's okay to talk about players in a vacuum but when you really get it down to brass tacks exactly. and your circumstance in this particular league no i would not trade uh, my first for Rashad Penny because I, I can't afford to. Yep. In our other home league that we started this year where I feel like I got a really good team, maybe I'm going to compete this year, maybe I'm not still, I'm kind of in flux, I would trade a first round pick for Rashad Penny yeah. because I, I feel like I can. I got guys in both of those leagues, yeah. which right now in that 12 man where I only have two, two running backs to start and didn't have one this week sucks because I could have drafted uh, somebody that was maybe startable in that position. No, Sonny Michelle was gone. I had one six. I oh, think. you were one five. You were one five. One five. Michelle went three. Yeah. I could have got Chubb, which would be probably starting now. Yeah. Um, But I went with Geis because I felt like it was too good to pass up at five or whatever. Yeah. And now it's killing me, but I got Geis in both leagues. <laughs> and now it's killing me. I was thinking about that last week. I was like, damn it. But next week, next year, it's going to be like I had two first round draft picks because of Geis, is, Geis is coming off the bench and yeah. I think he's about to light it up. Yeah. But in that other league, I would certainly like I know uh, Derek Bell, which has no reference to anybody listening. He has him and I would for sure. <laughs> I would for sure trade my first round pick for Rashad Penny next year without a, without a doubt. Yeah, like, I, I, it's not, I can control me not having a super high first round pick in that league because I even if I don't make the playoffs, I could either it's it's a play for the pick. So if I got into if I was in the, even in the losers bracket, I could, you so, know, I could not, throw. Not, I could throw a game. <laughs> you could not have the best lineup right. in. I could. Act, I, I could forget to pick up a kicker. I, well, not. We don't have kickers or defenses in that league, as none of y'all should. But, right. Right. You know, I could just maybe start Brita over Ingram, or maybe start you know somebody over Zeke or somebody over you know I could make you can't some, sit Zeke and you're in good conscience you, you can't never know sit maybe Zeke. I'm I'm questionable about this offensive line yeah, your little cousin I, got a hold of your computer Sunday yeah. morning and clicked the wrong stuff I was out of town <laughs> no cell service <laughs> yeah right anyway enough rambling about that but that's I, I wanted to take the opposite not I wanted to do I felt good about taking the other you were side telling of the argument. truth about the right. way you would handle this right. trade opportunity and I, as you were typing that in and the guy said thanks i was furiously <laughs> typing back like whoa bo here nay, Hold, hang nay. on that, i got a different side to this thing let, yeah. let me what's cool about this i know we got to finish up my producers over here pointing at me saying don't you do it but there's i want to say one more thing about this is what's cool about the the patreon stuff in case he touched on it this guy gave us his roster he gave us his draft picks. He gave us the the details about the league. Social so security we, number. We, we got his home address. We knew exactly what he was needing. We he showed us the trades he had recently made. So we knew exactly what he had, what he might have, and what you know all that good stuff. This is nine o'clock in the morning. I stopped exactly. This dude said I got a trade on the table, and so there's questions that come in, and they're not exactly something that needs to be it's some feedback right away. And we save them for the show, but and we still get on here and we talk about them, but we try to give them a little feedback if there's a trade on the table. So, you know, look, any feedback is good if feedback you can. when there's a trade t on the table. We got real jobs, so we yeah. But you know, we stop. You you stop what you were doing. You're feverishly texting. I stopped what I was doing. I was feverishly texting, <laughs> trying to help this guy out. 
the last part of it, I just want to show this for the people that's not on Patreon yet so they know what they could look forward to and see the value and what you get for $5 a month. The last I see in his roster, the last, after I told him I would, didn't think I would do the trade, I said, also, looking at you your roster. You thought you would do the trade. Yeah, I would do the trade mm-hmm. and, get, and, and send him over and get that first back. I said, also, looking at your roster, with Lynch going on IR, I would definitely be trying to turn Doug Martin into a second rounder, question mark, question mark, or better. Put him in a deal that wouldn't get done without a little something extra like Doug Martin. He could look awesome and have another level of value bump, but I say it's kind of unlikely, as bad as the Raiders are. And with Amari, sure. that was just a day. Amari Cooper had just being traded. This is definitely Lynch a chance. just went on IR. Or right. And so, wasn't so play. Doug Martin's hot. I said this is a chance to see the Raiders quit on the season the way the Giants did last year. If he comes out and looks bad, you might not ever get that second rounder back or whatever. So, And then Casey... In his response to what I said, saying I wouldn't do the deal, I would hang on to Rashad Penny, he goes, by the way, looking at your roster, I would package up Chris Thompson and try to make something out of him and this and this and this going forward because you're 2-5 and five and you're really not going anywhere, so might as well move Chris Thompson and get something better. And he made a deal. So that was two, you know, and maybe he maybe he still can trade Doug Martin before Sunday and, you know, things look bad or whatever, but that's just, that's the type of things that we're trying to help our Patreon members for. And sure. I wanted to finish what I, I wanted to, sh- to share those two things with our listeners and say, hey, you know, you you get in here on Patreon, you get a custom question, you tell us everything you got, we'll give you everything we got back yeah. and try try to help you out i don't know i might go to bed bath beyond i don't <laughs> yeah. know if i have enough take time. that little gun and shoot all <laughs> right. the little things put them on your registry right might not have enough time all right well you want to let me take us out in closing uh well, you know a closing well the in this has been i mean it needs the closing this has been a song solid long segment here uh my, my main d- argument against penny here was basically that the seahawks don't trust him i will concede that it's hard to trust the seahawks in their judgment they did cut alex collins the caveat. Hey Pete, for, you got any more of that gum? Right. It's none of your damn business, Ace. Gum chomps per second. I'd prefer if you stay out of my personal affairs. Uh, the caveat for Penny is that he is a really good receiver, so it, you know it'd be a lot easier for me to go against him if it, if he wasn't such a good receiver. And then the fact that he just he plays the running back position, and it's so hard to get a running back that you got to try and hold on to any running back that you can get. Uh, so, in the words of Meat. I, you know, in regards to running backs, I need you, I want you, but Rashad Penny, there ain't no way that I'm ever going to love you. But don't be sad, because <laughs> no two way. out of three ain't bad. There ain't no way I'm going to love you. two out of three, ain't, give me the drop. Well, that be saying, well, I'm going to, we're going to play some music, and okay. it would be like a mix up here. <laughs> we got another meat song Like going. a mashup? Right, and it would just be, uh, it would just be weird. But, so with that being said, I'd still take the first round pick for Rashad Penny. So we're in a band? <laughs> We're all in a band. What? No? I mean, I can't sing. Oh, I don't. I can't this play. Was, any I was just playing off either. of the nationwide commercials with Peyton Manning and right. Uh, I can the mashups. Can play, Casey could play the drums and he could probably sing if he had to with that Clive Walford I voice. Could, I could definitely Clive hit voice. you with some harmonies. Jay I don't Wayne, need to be the lead. Uh-uh. I mean, you got the ones and two. You could produce the music. You could well, make music on your with your lights over there and your blinkers <laughs> and your knobs. About, I think we could have a boop, boop, boop. <laughs> career and maybe some some scat. <laughs> I'm the worst singer in the world. Uh, I listen to my music real loud so that I can sing along and you don't have to hear me. Right. You got to turn it up. Uh, Get turned. All right. Let's get the hell out of here. Get out of here. Jesus. Let's let me take us out.